I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. I really, really appreciate it. And I think, I, I know that this will be worth your time because this is a massive announcement. It's been something we've worked on for more than a year. It's been through an incredible amount of revision and I think it has the capability to literally change the way people perceive investment fees. So I'm gonna start off Jan, who's the sponsor for Outvest at the Outsurance Group, will give a brief introduction and some bit of a history of why we started Outvest. And then I'm gonna take you through the innovation that we've asked you here to see today. It'll be short, probably over in half an hour. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you joining us to this exciting announcement of, of this big innovation um, for, for Outvest. But the Outurance Group, and obviously, as you know, Outvest is part of the Outurance Group. You know, we work relentlessly um, to be that customer champion, to you know, give our customers awesome service, but also to bring product innovation to, to our customers. So at Outurance, we're very much on a journey of building out into a holistic um, and larger financial services organization that offers not only short-term insurance products, but also life insurance products and investment products through multiple channels, you know, be that call center or digital or even our face-to-face -face, uh, distribution and service channels. And Outvest is a core part um, of that journey. You know, we started Outvest two years ago. Um, and, you know, what led to that decision was the real realization that if we combine modern technology um, coupled with digital advice and passive investment products, you know, we can create much better investment outcomes uh, for, for our customer base. You know, and I think the design of Outvest uh, lends itself to innovations such as the one fee, which really talks to, you know, this high fee problem that we have in South Africa, but also challenging the status quo of saying, why, if you invest more, should you pay more for essentially the same service? So, you know, that's the type of innovations that we want to see coming out of Outvest now and also into the future. No pressure. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, ha I'll hand back to, to Grant that will, uh, you know, illustrate the power of one fee for us. Okay. Thanks, Jan. So I think, um, have you got the clicker? I'll grab the clicker. So I think, I think where I really wanted to start is I wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the problems with the fee models in the industry at the moment. And then I want to give you an overview of exactly what Outvest of the one, the new one, the fixed one fee is. And then I also want to take you through something that's also important. It's not just about low fees. You also have to deliver on client promises. So we are an outcomes-based investor. That's still new. Not many people know what that actually means. But I think one of the things we've managed to do is to deliver on outcomes for clients. So I've got a nice stat I'm going to share with you as we go through the presentation. Okay, so we're proudly backed by Outsurance. This has been one of its fundamental success stories for our business. This is not a, a sort of a separate business to Outsurance. This is a, a part of Outsurance's DNA. And what we do is, I think as Jan said, one of the reasons we've been able to do one fee is actually our structure. We are actually, in technical terms, we're actually an investment administration provider in our own right. We also have our own retirement annuity, our own pension preservation fund, our own provident preservation fund. We're also a regulated Section 13B administrator for pension schemes. What happens when you combine all of those services, including a financial advisor, into one entity? Means you get all data in one place. Means you can design the entire client proposition in one place which also means that you've got cost subsidies that you can have across your business model. But why do fees really matter? And they're probably the most boring subject in the entire world. Nobody cares about fees, except Christia and Simon, sorry. Nobody cares about fees because it literally is one of the most boring things in the world. I mean, you know, if you think about it, if it was that interesting, we'd have to hire an auditorium. This is not necessarily a discussion on politics. This is a discussion on investment fees. But actually, investment fees have a real-world impact. They actually change someone's retirement outcomes. They can have a 40% difference on someone's actual retirement outcome. That's how important these things actually are. And nobody still, after all the work that has gone in from people like Christian Simon, nobody knows enough about fees. And it's partly because of the problems around the industry itself. It is impossible to understand 
the price you pay on your investment. And if it's impossible to understand the price you pay, you cannot make a judgment about the value that you get. And this is because of a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a percentage-based fee. Nowhere else in our lives do we use percentage-based fees to really make a value judgment. You can't. We use rands and cents. That's how we compare most of the fee models for everything we pay, be it a cell phone contract, our petrol, the price of a car, the price of a home. Everything we do is in rands and cents. But in the investment industry, it's in percentage. And this is one of the reasons why people have got no idea why 3% is such a big number in our world. They just don't know. And you can't blame them. And the other reason is because of the makeup of the industry, we're a differentiated, we're sort of a segregated industry where there are lots of different service providers. And each of those service providers has got a claim on your money. And so it's very difficult. You never really see the entire fee or the cost of your investment in one place. It's not on a statement. There is very, very unlikely that you'll be able to see a month, one monthly figure coming out of your investment account that shows you the total cost of your investment. And I'll show you why. This is what we've sought to change with the one fee. This is why it is so revolutionary because it addresses exactly these points. And I think Jan mentioned one of the key things about it is if you don't know the price you pay, you can't make a judgment about the value. Why is it that every time you invest a rand or a cent more into your investment, you pay more in fees, but your service doesn't necessarily change? I think that's the key question. What does it actually cost you to have an investment? These are all the questions that are coming our way when it comes to investments. Now, one of the reasons why it's so difficult to see is because of the makeup. We have got various service providers in the industry. We've got an advisor, an administrator, and an investment fund. This is one example. But in the listed markets, it is the same. These fees that are taken out of your investment will typically appear on a statement. Your statement from your administration provider. But those are not the total fees. Because when those fees appear on your statement, what is not shown to you is the necessarily included in those fees is the fees from the investment fund. This is not because of anyone's being sinister. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's just because administrating this is very, very difficult. It's because fees for the investment fund are taken directly out of the investment fund and you get the performance that's left. There's still fees, there's still charges for services that are rendered in the fund that you are using to gather performance, but they are not displayed necessarily on a statement in rands and cents against your name that you can see. This for us was absolutely fundamental. And it's one of the key things we did. In order to create one fee, we had to change the way fees flow in the industry. We had to change this model completely to be able to give an individual a single monthly fee that comes off on their statement that shows them all of the costs of their investment, every single thing from transaction charges to VAT, to trustee charges, to audit charges, to bank charges, to administration charges, to everything. You don't pay for anything of that. That is in that one fee. That's what makes this so powerful. It doesn't exist, as far as I know, anywhere else in the world where you can look at your statement every month and you can make a value judgment about the price that you pay for the service you get. So the revolution from us is effectively one of the main revolutions. In addition to that is our fixed fee. So it begs the question, 4,500 Rand a year sounds like a hell of a lot of money to manage. 300,000 Rand or more. In people's minds, I think when you tell people for the first time, you say, okay, cool, let's open a retirement annuity with Artfest. You're going to pay 4,500 Rand a year. What's their first reaction? It's going to be, yo, that's a fortune. That's so much money. It's because they've never realized before what they actually pay for this. In order to create this fixed fee, 
remember that this fixed fee covers everything to do with your investment. There is nothing else that is not in this fee. This fee also comes off on your statement every single month. It is so powerful. We think it'll literally change the way that people understand investing. The other thing about it, and for those of you that are in the investment industry, you guys have got a feeling for what investments cost. So you're thinking, okay, we know probably 4% is quite expensive. In fact, it's very expensive. 3% is probably quite common out there for lots of investment providers because of the South African industry. We know that 1% is getting on, 1.5 is getting on to be quite cheap. But what you've never seen before is for investments that are more than 2.25 million, you've never seen a fee of 20 basis points all inclusive. You've just never seen it. I have never seen a retirement annuity in South Africa that offers a fee for investments of 2.25 million or more. That's 20 basis points. It's funny. <clears throat> a lot of people will ask us why after this amount we had to switch back to <clears throat> a percentage-based fee. <clears throat> the truth is, is that we could not get transaction charges fixed. You can't do it. We're just one service provider. That was the one element that we couldn't change and we couldn't take the business risk. So what we actually, in our, in our sort of internal world, the 20 basis points for us is actually what we call a fair use charge. It's basically covering costs to make sure that we don't make a loss on the investment. That's all it is. That's why it's 20 basis points. And that is literally as low as we could possibly go. The other difference now, as you can see, is as we said before, if you have more than 300,000 Rand, for every Rand that your investment grows, or for every Rand that you put into your investment, your fee doesn't change. With percentage-based fees, that's not the same thing. I'm going to show you now what I mean. So the orange line that you see in front of you has got a fee of 3%. So that's a 3% all-inclusive fee. If you wanted to go and find that fee somewhere, you'd have to ask for something called your effective annual charge. It's the only way that you know that you're going to get your total fee. It's the new in the industry. I don't know if anybody's heard about it, but it's been going for a while. It's a standard that has been promulgated by ASISA. And providers in the industry, our industry, are actually producing these things. They are coming. You'll see more of them in the future. But it's a great way of understanding your total fee. So think of the 3% as an effective annual charge, which includes everything to do with your investment. Now, as you can see, once you get more than 300,000 Rand, as the investment value increases, the percentage value increases in a straight line. So you're now sitting at a point where you've got 1.5 million Rand invested in a retirement annuity. With Artfest, you're paying 4,500 Rand a year. But what you didn't know is if you had an EAC of 3%, you'd pay 45,000 Rand a year for the same service or for a similar service. So now you can start making a value judgment for the first time ever to say, what do I get and what do I pay for? That for us is really the line in the sand that we're drawing in the industry. In fact, we'd like to draw that line globally. Can we put a price on what our services cost as financial professionals. We're not sure. We did a business case. We made sure this was, that this worked in our own minds. But this is what we came out with. It's very different to 45,000. Now, once you start to get to 4.5 million Rand, you've got the same services that you're being rendered. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Same fund, same everything. You could be paying 135,000 Rand a year for the same thing, even though the 3% that you pay is still 3%. And I guess if you think, if, if you think about that, I think some, some of you might say, well, hey, 3% sounds like a lot of money. I don't usually pay 3% for my investments. I pay cheaper. We've actually done a little bit of market research. We haven't put the names out there for you. But on the slide deck, we've actually gone out and tried to. Bear in mind, we're professionals here. I know what an EAC looks like. I know what I need to look, like, look for an EAC. We have tried to do our best to find a couple of six well-known providers out there, find their EACs, even including any reductions in percentages as the AUM increases. 
and plot our new retirement annuity, or our one fee model against that. And you can see, as the investment value rises, we're still one of the cheapest in the entire industry. This is a new startup robo-advisor, been going for two years, and we're now drawing a line in the sand for every provider out there. So we think it's an incredibly aggressive model. And it's a statement from us to say that we're serious and we're here to help South African consumers save more. It's not an easy thing to get through. I mean, Jan was instrumental in helping us build a business case. Jan and Neil and Gareth all helped building a business case and getting board approval to make sure that we could do this. And here we are, to making this happen. So I think what I'd like to do now is um, I'd actually like to show you one of the biggest things about this, really, is we can sit here and we can have these discussions about this fee model that maybe quite a few of us in this room understand. But I think the really important thing is from the retail consumer's point of view. Simon, can you bring up a browser for me? I want to actually do a journey and show you one of the things we built into our RA model that I think you guys will find quite interesting. So I think we can, can you bring it up and show me on the screen? And you, can you navigate to Outvest for me quickly? Can you quickly check on, click on Get Started? And then click on Retirement Investing. And then click on Invest Now. So um, what I'm actually going to show you now is if we did a live example of us going through a journey where someone invested a certain amount of money, it could be anything from one and a half thousand rand. It doesn't really matter. Everyone's got a different amount they can afford. But I really wanted to show you on a personal level what this fee model can actually do. Jeez, okay, well, you don't look, you don't look, Simon, you don't look nearly that old. Yeah, you can, you can be younger if you want. No, wait. <laughs> Here we are really getting to know each other. Okay, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that's fine, because you live longer when you're female. So what we also do for you, I mean, if you think about it. With it <laughs> okay, so if you put in something like, I don't know, 1,500 rand a month, and say you were transferring another retirement annuity, but you can do either in this journey. You can transfer your retirement annuity, you can add a once of contribution, monthly contributions, and like anything, you can stop, start, do whatever you like in this journey. So this is what we call our reveal page. This shows you your plan. Now, if you think about it, you've given us a little bit of information. This is what we use automated advice for. We've built a modeling engine. That modeling engine, the fund selection with the information you've given us allows us to give you quite a lot of information really quickly. So we can deliver, and this is all regulated advice. We are a regulated automated advisor. So this has to be governed and delivered properly. All the algorithms checked, all that other stuff that no one will ever see has to be done to make sure that what we give here, we can stand behind in front of the phase ombud. So you can see now that the estimated income at retirement in today's money is 3,200 rand per month. Obviously, it's not going to get you very far, but it is in today's money, allows you to do a value judgment in today's terms. That allows you to give an estimated amount of 3.759 million at retirement, which is 3,200 rands in today's value. What I really want to show you is this. So this is just on Christia's own example, but comparing that to a 3% fee, just a 3% fee, our one fee model gives you a 75% saving and 1.184 million more in retirement. That's a retirement. That is, you know, in the future terms, that might be half the value of a house. This is real money we're talking here. People need to wake up. They need to think more carefully about these judgments that they make. And we want to help people to do this. So this is why we built this particular tool that people can see personally how much money they'll save using our systems. And if you think about it, in three steps, you now have an idea of what your income is in retirement. You know what fund that we select for you. You've got all this information. You can add a once-off withdrawal at retirement to see how that will affect your income. You can set that income as a target, and we'll work out what monthly contribution you need to reach that target. If you click on Learn More over there, 
you can see our income in retirement, the value at retirement, the income range, your withdrawal <coughs> amounts, all this text here is advice text. It's like a record of advice that's been generated for you in three clicks. This is what makes an automated advice system so powerful, is you're delivering very high quality information directly to a consumer. Okay, that's my sales pitch. Can we go back to the presentation? Unless there are any questions, by the way. Okay, so I guess the one thing I also wanted to tell you, and I, like, this is the, the thing that people will, I've actually had this question in our management meeting the other day. I won't tell you who asked me that question, but I had a very good question in the management meeting the other day, which said, okay, cool, great, this is super cheap. What am I getting for this? Am I getting low quality investment? What's my cost? And the truth is, is that we've now been going now, our funds have been going, thanks to CoreShares, for nearly three years. It'll be three years in, in March, hey? We've got a three-year track record in March of these funds. And this is something that we're incredibly proud of. So obviously, we use five unit trusts in our, in our portfolio, in our, in our fund selection, which is like, okay, cool, five unit trusts. But I think what really matters is, are we delivering value for clients? It's very, very hard to know this if you've got a portfolio of random ETFs, how you're doing relative to your peers. It's really, really difficult to have this understanding. But because we use those unit trusts, we can measure all of their performance against relevant peers. So what you can see here is that this is performance since launch. And I, I don't know why, I don't want to put the dates here, but it's basically the 20th of March, 2017 to the 31st of December, 2019. No, it's 2017. Yeah, we're in 2020. Yeah. But you need to come with me. We've got a business to run. You can see that the money market funds outperformed 53% of its peers. I don't know, those of you in the investment industry, like peer outperformance is really tough. Like they are, they are very, very smart people running funds. And we some of these funds, especially the ones we built with core shares, we built scratch for this business. You can see that the out cautious fund outperforms 39% of its peers because it's structurally low in equity. <laughs> because we do that on purpose because it's a robo-advisor. But the out stable fund, the out moderate, and the out aggressive fund, these are, these are the top peers in the industry. This is, these, are not, these are the big guys. I don't want to name them. But these are, this is the ASISA peer groups that we're comparing the performance of our funds against. And these people are getting financial planning, really high quality investment exposures, and advice, access to a human advisor, annual reviews, tracking systems. We actually built an investment tracking system. That system gets people to outcomes. That tracking system is, I don't know, another tracking system like it. It effectively ensures that it tracks you against your investment objective every single time you log in. It even knows if you've changed your investment target. And it'll tell you what you need to do to get back on track again. That kind of power in the hands of a retail consumer, they don't know everything about investment, but now they've got a high quality offering right in front of them, out the box. They don't need to do portfolio construction, they don't need to go and understand an ETF, they've got a really high quality out the box solution that is managed by a professional team backed by a large organization, helping them get to their objectives. And I learned a stat the other day. We actually did this just for this presentation. I didn't know it before. We've been running now for over two years in live and we've got a number of people who've now passed their targets already. So they've set up a goal with us. They save towards that investment goal and that's been achieved. Now I've, uh, this is probably the most and one of the important things to me was 67% of all of those goals achieved 100% of their targets or better. That is getting people to outcomes. That's real. You can't make that up. That is real data in our warehouse that we can track people getting to their objectives. That tech's not out there yet. But people are using it. So, that's effectively wanted to, what, I, what, I, what I wanted to give you. I don't even think I've been 20 minutes. How long have I been? 25 minutes. Has it felt like 50? Just asking. I don't care. I don't know if you guys are interested. I can take you through three or four more slides on how we run our investment performance. Like, hands up who's interested in how we deliver our investment stuff. Oh, come, okay. 
So Jan, Jan made it too. I'll be very, very quick though. So I wanted to show you some of the magic. Like if you think about, so the way we thought about Outfest, it's like, it's like a car, right? A lot of you guys get in a car or you use a blender every single day or you get up and you shave um, if you're a guy on the face. Um, a lot of you guys think about these things every day. <laughs> Just checking. But, but the truth is, is that we don't give a second thought to how that tech is put together. Just to, just to create the foil on a razor, do you know how many processes are going into to making sure that you punch holes in a foil, put a blade behind it, put a motor into that, all the quality control, a car? How do we make tires? How do you vulcanize rubber? What's the material science behind crash or plastics? We don't think about any of that stuff. That's how we think about investment. We are engineering an outcomes-based solution, and this is part of it. Now, if I go to the next one here, this is our what we call our investment gearbox. This is a professional institutional quality investment solution. You've got money market at the base, and then you run an index of indices for every single portfolio that's calculated by S&P Dow Jones indices. It's a custom index that Dow Jones calculates for us every day that consists of other indices. I used to work at Schroeder's. And my passion was portfolio construction. I used to love building portfolios. I used to love the stats behind how portfolios are constructed and how you deliver outcomes for people. So what this does is give us the investment gearbox that allows clients to achieve their objectives, but also, more importantly, make sure that clients are in the right risk bucket. So what you see here is this is the back test return for these portfolios. What you'll notice is in the aggressive fund, which is the yellow bar, that has the top cumulative performance. Then you've got the moderate, the stable, and the cautious. This is a back-tested number, so you guys are like, okay, cool, it's a bit random because it's back-test. But you can also see the volatility, the standard deviation of this line, the up and down movements of this line is lower than this line. That's by design. It's because of the way we design the portfolios. Okay, It's not for performance. We're not sitting here going, should we outperform? How do we outperform? We're doing this to get people to outcomes. The performance is a result of that because of the cost efficiencies in the funds. I'm nearly finished, I promise you. I can see I ain't now. So this is the standard deviation, which in the investment world is a measure of risk. Now we're going into the material science element of portfolio construction, what we do as a profession. So we achieve these levels of risk. And what does that actually mean in practice? It means that a client who's been through our risk profiler is always in the right portfolio. It means that the portfolios will deliver as expected because of our indices, because of the way the portfolio construction works. It means we can prove to the ombud, we can prove to the client why they're in the right portfolio. I, didn't need, I don't need to change this every five minutes. This is also a passive, rules-based investment approach. But by using passive and rules-based, it's not just cost you get. You also get a way of creating performance for clients. And we also can use that in our forecasting engine to get clients their outcomes. This is real. This is real data. Notice the same thing. The aggressive fund, whenever the equity markets run, the aggressive runs harder than every other fund. But when the, when the equity markets fall, the aggressive falls harder than every other fund. It is by design that this is the case. Again, sorry, Petri. Uh, how easy would it be for an investor to switch between funds? They can do it instantaneously. So fund switch is available on the app and it's available mm -hmm. on the web. They can do it. Mm -hmm. But importantly, whenever they switch funds, our cash flow engine recalcs their plan to help them understand the impact of doing that. When they, when, when they do a withdrawal, if they withdraw from a tax-free savings account, we help them understand the impact on their lifetime allowance because of their withdrawals. If they withdraw from a voluntary plan, we help them understand that there may be a tax impact as a result of withdrawing from a voluntary plan. This is what a robo-advisor does. Even in our investment tracking system, when you switch funds, our algorithm stores all your previous fund history and uses that to still calculate your investment objective to see if you'll reach it. The client won't necessarily, we, don't, we can't estimate exactly the, the volume of capital, the, the amount, 
but we can say there might be capital gains tax. And then before they make that decision, but also remember we've got human advisors in our call center. And our human advisors are just there to give advice. They're not paid commission, they're paid a salary. And they're there to help someone make an informed decision. <coughs> it's another one of those things that sits behind the scenes. So when you take the one fee, the investments, the algorithms, and the digital experience, this is why we hope and we believe that we have done something genuinely different in South Africa. Guys, thank you very much. That's me. I appreciate all of your time and your effort. Um, are there any questions, by the way? Any other questions? To be honest with you, I'm not sure how much I get. I don't know how much I matter in their lives yet. Yeah. I think, I think there will be some element of response from competitors. But I, to be honest with you, I actually have no feeling as to what it'll be. I'd love some response because I'm the challenger. So once you indicate that you would like to transfer, we've actually built a admin system, a sort of a, a sort of a processing system in our admin portal. And then unfortunately, like every other RA transfer, we will handle the process manually from there. We're actually considering adding resources to our business at the moment to handle our transfer capabilities. So it, it is a question. It's a very good question. We um, take it as it comes. <laughs> Thankfully, no, but we, we are regulated. It's funny, like when we were applying for our license in 2017, we were engaging with a regulator about how you talk about robo-advice. And I think that, you know, these, these, those regulations, Section 38, was promulgated in December 2017. We obtained our license in May of 2017. So we were before the regulations. So I didn't know what those regulations were, but we'd studied global best practice. So all our algorithms are documented. So as part of our application, we actually submitted our algorithms to the regulator. And I think, um, I'd like to say, I'd love to say, I could never say this, but I'd love to say that the regulator was like, oh, cool, we'll write some of the stuff up and put it in the regulations. But I don't think it's, I don't think this would happen, but I would love to be able to say that. But uh, I, I'd like to say we're ahead of the curve when it comes to rubber. Yeah, it does. It increases by inflation every single year, but it doesn't increase because of the investment value. And interesting, yes, but interestingly, those calcs that you saw on that reveal page, those calcs include the inflationary adjustment to our fee that we expect to make. We may choose not to make one this year, but those calcs are conservative based on even us increasing that fixed fee, you still get a 73% difference reduction in fees even though we increase it. But that's because it doesn't scale like a percentage-based fee. Yes, David. Is the four and a half it's 12 divided by four and a half. If you're, if you're in that bracket, it'll appear on your statement. That RAND value will come off every month clearly on your statement, and that is the only thing that you pay. It's a crude daily billed monthly. So I think, to be honest, it comes down to our backer. This is a model that requires patience. So I think the fundamental belief is there is an advice gap in South Africa. There are people that would like to start investing or engaging with their investments, but don't or can't necessarily access a financial advisor. So only 20% of working metropolitan households have access to a financial advisor. The majority of the belief that they don't is because they don't think they've got enough money. You can't roll out another 100,000 financial advisors or 200,000. It's not going to work at the moment. There has to be another way. So we believe the robo is that solution. Is it an easy model? No. Believe me, I've been tested more than I would have been like. This is difficult. But I think we've got a partner and an, an understanding there that we think will give us the patience we need to make this work. We're going to have to make some changes in the future. But I think it's there. Sorry. It, it is in our documentation, yes. So uh, you won't. You, you, I think you, you won't anymore just because it's not a number. It's not one number. It's actually a curve over the investment time horizon by fund that we use. So it's actually, and then that curve is then adjusted for our, exp, our fees. No, no, we don't do that. I think we, yeah, we, so we, what we do is we, 
we use an inflation adjusted approach based on expectation of the up end of inflation. And then we used a stochastic modeling approach. So now, now we're really into the engine now, but if you, if you really want to know, then basically what we do is we use a stochastic modeling engine that uses the 40th percentile of confidence. Okay, we use 115 years of market data from the London Business School. And then we take that data and we create a, it's called a bootstrapped effective return for every cash flow that you are putting into our systems. And then we will calculate the distribution that you use on the 80th, the 40th and the 10th percentile net of fees. So that's why this thing is, yeah, it's, it's incredibly, the detail that's here is incredible, which is why we're then focusing so hard on outcomes. This is why the outcomes thing is so important. So the underlying indices haven't been adjusted since launch. We're now doing a research project at the moment to see whether or not we want to go through and adjust the asset allocations. Um, but the problem is the moment you adjust your asset allocations, you've then got to go and adjust all of the calibrations in your advice algorithms. So it's a super amount of work. You've got to be damn sure that you do it because the one thing we don't want to break, the, the really one thing I'm terrified of breaking is that investment gearbox. So we, we've actually... We've worked with I mean, our own internal team and we're doing a, a modeling exercise at the moment that uses um, both this data from S&P and the 115 years of data. And we're going to be doing an impact exercise to understand whether or not or how we adjust the portfolios to make sure that we don't break the gearbox. One thing we don't really care about is the peer group performance when, you do, when we do this exercise. It's can we still get people to outcomes and will we break this gearbox? Sorry, Lalani. Yeah. So we've got two independent board members. They are highly experienced. Um, I won't give you the names because I haven't asked yet. But And then the principal officer himself is also independent. He's not from the firm. And he's also an experienced principal officer. We've actually already met probably four times. Uh, the trustee board met four times before it launched. All the policies have been approved. And that own thing will go onto the internal risk register of our insurance to be managed like everything else. So, so you know, other, again, you never see the risk process at the background. The fact that we form part of outsurance internal risk, we have internal audits to make sure that we comply with Section 38 and all of that other stuff. It's going to make, make life interesting. But I think when you keep things super simple, like we've done, and you document them, you give yourself a good chance. But I think what's more important is, is making sure that you keep clients informed about getting to where they want to go. Are there any other questions, guys, before I close? Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll be out there to have some drinks and some snacks and some canapes. Thank you. Okay.